Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here with another Cubase video. And in this video, I'm gonna go over what I think is a very essential skill for songwriters, producers, anyone in the studio. And I'm gonna be using the Time Warp tool, which is a tool that maybe a lot of people don't touch because it's kind of freaky. Time Warp tool is an amazing tool. It allows you to make the tempo change at certain bars or beats. You can push the tempo, you can pull the tempo, in some situations, you might want to do that, say, for scoring a movie, and I've got a video that I'll link to for that one where I'm using the Time Warp tool to write a cue, write a piece of music, and then squish the tempo so that that cue, maybe those four bars of music, fits into a certain length of time in the film itself. But in this video, what I'm gonna do is show you how you can use the Time Warp tool to map the tempo of a freely played song to your Cubase project. If somebody sends you, or if you have a recording of a song that was freely played without a click track, tempo's fluctuating all over the place, what you can then do is make every bar and every beat of Cubase match to the bars and beats in the freely played song. So a very important technique, time warp tool, very confusing when you're first starting to get into it. So well, here's the song, let me just play a little bit of it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is figure out the rough tempo of the song. And to do that, I'll show you another little trick. This is the beat calculator. So if I go up to project and then go to beat calculator, and then I click the tap tempo button, and then I start tapping along with the song. So before I start tapping, let me play it. So I'll press play. And tap tempo. So, about 100 beats per minute. All I need to do to start out is set the tempo of my project to 100. Once I've done that, I can now start using the Time Warp tool. I'm gonna to place the beginning of the song right at beat one of whatever bar I wanna start on. So, I've already got it kinda of trimmed down here. So I'm just gonna keep that right at, at that bar right there. And then what I'm gonna do is turn on the Time Warp tool. So all I have to do is click on this little button right here. And then I can start warping the tempo. And there's two options here. One is to warp the grid. And that would allow me to set in these little flags to push and pull the tempo. And if I just had it set to warp grid, any musical notes would stay exactly at that moment in time and wouldn't follow the bar. So if you had a chord that came in on bar two, that wouldn't actually move as you sort of warp the tempo around. So you'd wanna make sure if you have any musical based stuff in there, so virtual instruments, anything MIDI, you'd wanna make sure that this option was set to musical events follow. And then that means that chord that starts at bar two or bar three or whatever is always gonna start at bar two or bar three, no matter how much you push or pull the tempo. So let's leave that exactly where it is. It doesn't matter which one you have it on for this if you're just starting from scratch. And then what I need to do is go through the song and find the beats. That's all I need to do. And it's a little tougher with just something like acoustic guitar. It's gonna be easier if you have some drums in there or something like that, because you can very clearly see what's called the transient. So we start out and let's have a listen to the first bar. So I can hear that bar three should line up right here, but it doesn't. Right now it's a little bit uh, late. So what I can do is grab anywhere with this time warp tool and the snap set to grid and to bar, watch what happens. As I mouse over, I get this tiny little line and that little line is gonna show me where I am grabbing. So I am gonna grab bar three, but before I do that, watch what happens. If I move this over, look what happens to bar two there. It's kind of kind of moving around and we don't want that. We want bar two to be where this thing starts. So before I do that, what I need to do is grab bar two and I just need to click there. And by clicking there, I am actually placing one of these little flags right here. Let me do that again. So I'm gonna erase that. I click right here and a little flag drops in and we can see that it says 100 and 100. And what I've done is just set in a little marker, a little tempo marker, that's actually gonna show up on the tempo track later on. I can show you that. 
For now, you can see this tiny little flag. That's all I need. And I could go on to the next bar and I need to drop in another flag right here. All I need to do is grab at bar three anywhere and I can slide it around until I get to where I think bar three should start. So it's probably somewhere on that little transient. Let's listen to the next chunk. So there's bar four. Just slide this one over until we get to bar four. Watch what happens if I turn the click track on now. Okay, it's starting to get a little bit off right here, but this one was pretty close, so I can I, I often just go through and just drop these flags in just about every bar. But you'll see that you can actually do this every beat too. And if you do want to to set these flags at beats, what you can do is set the quantize or set the grid to beats, and then now you can move individual beats around too. So you could actually have pushing and pulling on every single beat, which I don't need here. But let's leave it, let's leave it on bar for now. And I'm going to put this one right here. But you know what? There is a little bit happening here. I can push that one right there. There was a bit of a slowdown right here. So all I need to do is set it to beat. And then I can move beat four over just like that. So now let's have a listen to that with the click. I saw so now we get the full kind of slowdown. And then it lines up at bar six. So let's go on to bar. I'm going to set it set this one, I'm gonna, I can see that transient. And as I go through, I can kinda, kinda get to know where the beats are. So I can kinda do this in real time. It ends up not taking very long once you get fast at it. So let me go through and do this as fast as I can. I saw you there with blondish hair, blondish hair. So I can see that one needs to go over. Blondish hair, try it. Same thing right here, a little bit over. And by the way, I've made some key commands for myself. Just if anybody's wondering, I have W and E are assigned to rewind and fast forward. So I can really fly around quickly and my left hand just kind of stays right here. I've got another key command. I've made D for stop. So that takes me back to where I just started from instead of going way over here to the zero. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Try and Trying to figure out. Trying to figure out. A little bit over. If my words were scared. A little bit over right there. Another one right there. I can't seem to find out what's going on. I can't seem to find out what's going on inside your head. Now that one's really late. Things slowed down a little bit. So I'm just going to move this one over. Let's see how that sounds. What's going on inside your head? We live mostly on the surface. And I'm left here. And I'm left here. And I'm left here. That one's a little soon. I'm gonna move that over. And I'm left here. Wondering if you've noticed. There we go. And I'm gonna stop it right there. So all I've done is gone through and marked in every bar, and sometimes a beat, where the new tempo should be. And it's kind of a weird process, honestly, but uh, it's also weird when you're listening to the click and it's not lining up, but you just kind of know it's going to. But what we can do now is we can look at what we've just done here. So if I press Command T or go up to Project Tempo Track, we can see this thing called the Tempo Track. And the Tempo Track is going to show you all of the changes in tempo in your project. It's where if I was scoring something, I could go in and have tempo changes every few bars, or sometimes if I'm doing animation stuff, I have tempos that slow down and speed up. And then what you can do there is you can put ramps in and stuff like that. So that's where you change all of the tempo things in a project, and uh, or even just simple things like maybe at you know, one point in the song, the tempo changes to a totally different tempo. So you drop that in with a little marker. You can use the pencil tool and set the tempo to whatever you want at any certain bar. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave this exactly the way it is with all of these fluctuations in it. So So now we can see that the tempo is matching perfectly with the changes in the tempo of the original recording. But now what I'm going to do is show you how I could then take this, add some piano to it, and maybe some other instruments, and keep composing or, or arranging stuff with the original voice and the original guitar. So I don't even need the person in the studio to do this kind of thing. So let me skip over to a different version of the song where I've done that. So first off, I'll show you what I've got here. I've got I've gone through and I mapped out the whole thing, and I've got intro, verse, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, etc. So now all of the structure of the song is laid out, and it all conforms exactly to where in time they actually sang or played that part. But my tempo map is mapping to that, so I can just play along with this recording. I can get a feel for what the song is actually like as opposed to just playing with an acoustic guitar track or something like that. It's a song maybe that I've never heard before. So now I can go through, come up with my piano parts, maybe I put some drums in and a few little string things, and those are going to map perfectly to their recording for now. I can keep producing the song like this as long as I want, and then I'll show you in a minute how I can then erase the original track and erase the tempo map that I put in there to leave it at a consistent tempo the whole way through. So there we go. I'm using the Una Corda piano from Contact. And I'm also using the Session Strings Pro 2 library from Contact. Really nice, sort of simple string library. And I'm also using Machine. So I would go through, maybe get down the structure of the whole song. And once I've done that, here's the cool part. When I'm ready to re-record the acoustic guitars and the vocals and start recording any kind of audio tracks, first thing I would do is save as a new version. So I go File, Save New Version. And then I delete this scratch track. And I go to my tempo map by pressing Command T. And I see this map is all over the place, right? And the cool thing about this is each one of these tracks are locked to a moment in time. So this note right here is locked at bar six. And this chord right here is locked in the middle of bar nine in between those two beats. You know, every single one of these hits is locked to a, a beat or a bar or a subdivision of the beat. And so when I go and remove all of this tempo map information, it doesn't matter to those notes. Those notes are going to stay at bar six, at bar eight, or whatever I want. So I can change the tempo to whatever I want, and my entire arrangement is going to stay at the appropriate bars and beats. So all I need to do is choose a tempo. So I'm going to go press Command T, and I'm going to select all of this tempo information and delete it, just like that. And the next thing I can do is now decide my tempo at the very, with this one point at the very beginning. So all I need to do is go to that tempo point right at the beginning, or I can just set in the tempo of the song here down at the bottom on the transport. So I can set this to 90 beats per minute if I want to, and let's have a listen to it. song just plays through the way it should, I can set the tempo to 120 beats per minute if I want, right? Everything will now go push and pull with the tempo that I choose. And the great thing about that is now the entire structure of the song is in place. 
So it's just a really simple way to start the arranging process if you're working with a file or a recording that isn't done to a click track, a tempo track, and you just want to get some of the bones or the structure of the song down. Hopefully this helps you out, gets you a good understanding of what the Time Warp tool does. It's a super useful tool. Make sure you go watch the other video where I am using the Time Warp tool in relation to composing for film and pushing and pulling tempo that way. And uh, hit the subscribe button if this is the first time here and the bell. I do all sorts of videos, not just Cubase videos, but I will constantly be doing more Cubase videos in the future, and I've got a bunch in the past if you go check on the playlist. So, but thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.